The Alpha's back at home and is ready for some more work. This time, it's the braking system. One day, while driving to work, I lost all of the braking power in the car slowly over the course of the drive. I pulled into the parking lot and had no brake pedal feel. So it's time for some major upgrades to the braking system. Join me as I begin to replace the components along the braking system and battle unforeseen circumstances that come along the way. We'll start with the master cylinder. Here's a good image of what went wrong. On the top right is the master cylinder, connected to the brake booster, with fluid coming out of it from a broken o-ring. The air that got in through that o-ring compresses and didn't allow me to brake. I'm going to show you all of the mistakes I made along this process because it would have helped me and there's very little information on YouTube about these cars. I hope you enjoy. I'd like to begin by thanking the zip tie that held my brakes together that day. It's still on in this video. But first, we need to cover all this whole area in cloth. Brake fluid is very corrosive, so I wanted to cover the whole area in cloth before any more could get on my paint. I then started pulling components off. Now, that's all correct, but before you remove your old components, you want to make sure that your new ones work. I ran into issues where two master cylinders that I ordered back to back did not work. I had cheaped out on them and ordered them from a parts store online. And finally, I ordered one that was proper for the car from Centerline Alpha. I didn't want any of the brake fluid getting on my phone, so unfortunately I didn't record me taking off the reservoir. But all I used was a turkey baster to scoop fluid out. And then the rest came out when I popped it off of its grommets, which had already cracked and were leaking. That's why air was getting into the system and I lost all of my brake feel. I inspected the part and you can see pretty clearly on both the master cylinder and on the brake booster where the grommet had started to crack and dry rot. On the right side, there's a black line. That's rust and corrosion and you can tell that the part is pretty worn there. All of that is from brake fluid leaking out. So the master cylinder is now off in one piece. There's a nice layer of rubber around here from where the old grommet was. And it looks like it kind of wore out right below, which is directly where there was fluid dripping down originally. It's really gunked up and dirty, so I'm gonna have to clean it. But I'm gonna show you the inside also so that you can see what it looks like. When you press your brake pedal, this little piston will push into your brake cylinder, master cylinder and that compresses your brake fluid. Um, that's then sent down into your brake lines at pressure and it goes into your brake calibers. Um, that's how I've learned it. I may be missing something, but it's pretty simple. And once you learn how it works, it's easy to diagnose where things fail. Yep, that's me, blowing air through the lines. I wanted to get all the old brake fluid out, so I decided the quickest way to do it was to send some compressed air down through all of the lines and out through the calipers, where the bleeder screws were cracked. Everything was open, and this was a turning point in the project because, boy, was it a mistake. It doesn't damage the components if you do it right, but it definitely doesn't help that they had to sit there for six months afterwards to wait for proper parts to come in. I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you are absolutely sure that all of the components that you have are going to work. Then to finish the cleaning process, I blew brake lean through the lines. And it's uh, not harmful, but I wouldn't suggest it and neither would my dog. While this project started in August, it's now early, early spring. 
I can tell because I'm wearing a winter jacket and the brake booster is painted. I'm putting on new hardware that I picked up from the local hardware store. I used the old hardware from the old master cylinder to match it up and spent about two bucks on these nuts and washers. This is the master cylinder that's actually going to work and I'm getting ready to finish up. On these cars, the fittings can sometimes get stripped. So I purchased this M10 by 1.0 die and re-threaded the lines by hand. An interesting thing about alphas is that some come with M10 and some come with M11. Depending on how your car was assembled, if it's in America and got sent to Detroit. So this gave me a bit of trouble. I now have the lines and the master cylinder reservoir back on the car, so it's time to start bleeding. So the process is going to be the brake pedal gets pressed in all the way and held down. Then I'm going to come over here with the 11 millimeter wrench and I'm going to loosen each of these until I get a spurt of air slash hydraulic fluid out of it. I will tighten it back up and then release the brake pedal, pump it up again, and we'll repeat that process. So press in, hold, there we go. This is port two. This one will generally gravity bleed as well. If I can get the wrench on there, that'd be great. Oh, just heard a little squirt. So I'm gonna tighten that back up. I had expected the fluid level to drop overnight. I left the cap unscrewed on the reservoir so that it didn't create a vacuum and I wanted the car to gravity bleed. This should only take about 15 minutes, but as you can see, it was getting dark and I didn't have enough time. So I came back out and the fluid level hadn't dropped at all. I double checked each of the ports and I was getting fluid perfectly fine. On the rear brake lines, there was no fluid reaching the caliper, so I knew I had an issue. The front lines were basically fine, but it was very low fluid flow. see what happens as we keep going through the car. This hose, this brake line is completely dry, but I cracked this line and it's wet. Obviously you can see the fluid burst of air came out, but this line is also completely dry. I now present to you a new brake fluid diverter valve. Also known as a proportion in valve, it splits the percentage of brake pressure between the front and rear calipers, and mine had gotten stuck because there was no fluid in it for such a long time. I purchased new lines and this new diverter valve, but some funky stuff went on later, and you'll see what happens. Replacing the master cylinder on the Alpha has turned into a very long and frustrating project. I'm going to have to replace all of the hydraulic lines as well as the diverter valve. That's lines can get corroded and on the inside Having won't allow fluid flow. Makes this system that's what happened to the lines that I had because they were so old. I don't have to worry about going back and replacing the lines or the diverter valve for quite a while. I'm going to start by putting the brake lines on and then working with the diverter valve simply because most of these lines don't have fluid in them on the car and it's going to be less messy that way. Um, also, I don't want these exposed to the elements for too long because I don't want any water or dust and debris to get inside the lines. To get the rear brake hose off, you have to take some of the lines off of the diverter valve. And this is where things start to get even more interesting. Just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, the diverter valve suddenly decided to start working, and I think it freed itself over the course of the six months by sitting in fluid. If you watch my hand, there will be fluid that starts to come down from inside of the diverter valve. It's old fluid and it's been pushed out by new. This saves me the hassle of replacing the OEM diverter valve with the new one. And while I still have it, 
I'm going to wait to replace it until I do another major brake job, like caliper rebuilding or new pads and rotors. That's annoying. That's very annoying. Mentally, I got stuck here. I didn't want to lose all the fluid in the diverter valve and risk it getting stuck again, although the likelihood of that happening was slim to none. So I stopped and I came back to it later. I was having trouble getting the fitting on the left hand side off and I wanted to tackle that before working with the diverter valve. The hose attaches to a T fitting that mounts right on the differential and every time I hit it, the line would rotate so I clamped it and I hit it a couple times with a dead blow and it came right off. Here's a better look at the clamp on the fitting. I hit the wrench with the hammer to break the seal since there was corrosion between the old line and the fitting. It's very simple and it didn't damage the components, but you just have to be careful. I unscrewed the old line and put the new one on. When doing this, make sure you have your fluid reservoir topped off so that you don't run out of fluid and have to bleed your master cylinder again. The cap should also be unscrewed and that'll keep a steady stream of fresh fluid coming through your lines. The order that the brake line has to go in is a little bit tricky. The rear of the line should go in first and the fitting for it is different than the front of the line. You don't wanna mess that up. The front of the line has a nut that can be used to secure it, but the rear doesn't. So once you put the rear in, the hose can't rotate. I had to do this multiple times because I made the mistake of putting the front in first. Brake line fitment is super important, so you don't want to mess it up. It's always good to double check your work, and I'm glad I did. I've removed the front passenger side tire and I'm gonna give you a view of the brake line since I can't get one from underneath. This goes into the caliper and this runs the hard line into the master cylinder. This is the next line I'm gonna re be replacing. I used a 15 millimeter, a 17 millimeter, and a 14 millimeter on these lines. It was a pretty easy process, same as before with the lines having two different fittings and the order of operations being somewhat tricky, but it's out with the old and in with the new. This is the front driver's side brake line. Again, I can't get a good view of it, so I'll be placing the camera right about here. I myself am a visual and hands-on learner, so for those of you who like to learn that way, I'm just gonna let the rest of this side play without saying anything else. Pause it where you like and leave questions in the comments if you have them. Oh. 
With all of the new components on the car, it's time to start bleeding the braking system, starting with the rear right, then to the rear left, and then to the front right, and then the front left. Okay, cool. When bleeding brakes, you want to start from the furthest caliper and work your way up to the closest caliper to the master cylinder. Crack open the cap on your brake fluid reservoir to allow fresh fluid to enter the lines. Then take the appropriate sized wrench and get underneath the car. Have a buddy pump the brake pedal five times and crack open the bleeder. Okay. Air and liquid should come out at the same time. Close the bleeder and repeat the process. You want to do this until all of the air is out of the caliper and only fluid comes out when you crack open the bleeder. It should be a very small turn and it shouldn't require too much force. Repeat that process on all four calipers and you should feel that the brake pedal is getting firmer and firmer after completing each one until a normal brake pedal feel is obtained. All four corners have been bled. The brake master cylinder and the brake reservoir has been topped off with fluid and the brake pedal does not go down all the way when pressed, which is good. So now we have to do a test drive and see if everything is sealed up and nothing is leaking. There are no leaks and the car's braking feels very natural. It's time to go back to the shop to tidy up a few odds and ends. That front light is really bugging me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again very soon.